Hello and welcome to Life After NARC. I'm Paula and if you're a subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new and you like this video, please subscribe. Narcissists love early warning light. If you were in a love relationship with a narcissist and you no longer are, and hopefully you no longer are, or if you still are, there were probably early warning signs that you probably missed. And these early warning signs were probably one of their character not being what they presented it to be, and two, that they weren't really going to treat you the way they presented that they were going to treat you. And some of these will actually show up before the actual first devaluation or the first incident of abuse. And that is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, some of the instances from what happened to me. And I would love to hear um, what happened to you. What were some of the early warning lights that went off to you that maybe you didn't recognize at the time? And me being a people pleaser, I just kind of let some of these things slide because I thought, well, that's no big deal. You know, there's no reason to make a big deal out of these issues. But they really did show that he didn't really care. And I should have paid a lot more attention to these things. But as you know, narcissists love bomb and rush things so quickly so that you don't notice these things. So I married my narcissistic ex after only 10 weeks. So first I'm going to cover some of the character defects that showed up pretty quick that were the opposite of what he was telling me or the way he presented himself. And then I'm going to tell you about a couple of the little things that he did that were the opposite of what you would think a newlywed would treat their new spouse. So as far as the character of my new husband, I met him on a Christian dating site. So I mistakenly assumed that meant that he had good moral characters, including honesty. But he failed to tell me before the marriage, and I had to find out after the marriage, that he had recently filed bankruptcy. And then when I found out, he pretended that that would be no big deal, even though I was an accountant. Then the next thing that he did is he had me file his tax return, um, because even though when I met him, I was working as a finance director, uh, I had previously been a CPA, so I filed his taxes and he had me doing mortgage interest deductions on his taxes and everything. And then I found out a few months later that the home that he had been living in was a rental. So you don't deduct mortgage interest when you don't own the home, when you're renting it from someone else. And then many months later, after we moved into our home together, which we purchased with the down payment from money from the sale of my home, we got a knock on our door and it was a lawsuit that was filed against him from his former landlord for damages to that home when he had lived in it with his former wife, supposedly for holes she'd kicked in the walls and they hadn't cleaned and everything. So 
and it was really having me questioning his moral character. And then the really disturbing thing that he did was we got satellite TV, but what I mean by we got satellite TV was he did not pay for the satellite TV. He got an illegal hookup with some kind of a card where he was stealing the signal. And then we could be in the middle of watching TV and the signal would go out and he'd go on a computer and get with these people online while they were trying to crack the new code again. So this was the honest Christian man that I married who obviously did not have good moral character. So um, beware. <laughs> Beware on Christian dating sites. Do not assume that the person you are getting is who they say they are. And don't marry someone after 10 weeks. That is for sure. The next things I'm going to be describing are incidences where they're not really abuse, but they are where you would expect your partner to be loving and attentive, especially if you're newlyweds, but even if, you know, they're just a partner and they do not act attentive like you expect they would. And we had just barely gotten married and actually we weren't even living together yet. And this is a man who was calling me princess, showering me with flowers, gifts, telling me how wonderful I was. We had come up, the kids and I had come up, we weren't even living together. The kids and I had come up for the Easter weekend and my youngest son suddenly, and he was only two, had a very bad asthma attack and uh, my husband was very reluctant to even, it was in the morning, was really reluctant to even get out of bed and drive down to the urgent care with me. But he did, and we went there, and they tried the shots and everything, and the nebulizer treatments, and they weren't working. So they told my son and I we needed to get into the ambulance and go to the hospital. So I told my husband, okay, well, go to the house, get some things, and please come meet me in the hospital. Well, he didn't show up to the hospital for like five hours. And that was not expected at all. Like I said, we were newlyweds, and I was really shocked by that. Another incidence happened where we took five kids to like this kids gaming place and I discovered that I was out of diapers in the diaper bag and that was my bad and my youngest had a very poopy loaded down diaper so I asked him could you run to the store and get some diapers so I sat there with the five kids as this diaper is getting saggier and saggier and saggier. And that was in 2001 and I didn't even own a cell phone. And I was in a different town and he was gone for an hour and a half. He didn't just run and grab the diapers. He like, I didn't know he had a shopping addiction and he was and I was getting more and more frantic and stressed out. And, you know, it's just like little things like that that he did that I just, he just added to this. It was like I had this stress bucket when I was with him. And he was just adding all this stress to my stress bucket. And I just did not know what to think. So we got married in March before the Justice of the Peace with um, nobody really there. And then we had a second wedding in 
the end of June, right after my house sold and right before I we all moved up to his area. And so we, we had the second wedding with family and friends um, at my church. And so there were going to be like 40 people at my house for, um, you know, food and cake and everything after the church ceremony. So I was going to have to, you know, help my mom prepare a bunch of the food. And I had, before we went to the church, get it ready for when we got back. And I had asked him, could you go outside really quick and with the hose and like just spray some of the spider webs off the outside of the house? And I asked him to do it about three or four times. And he said, he kept saying yes, that he would do it. But then he never did it. He, he didn't do it. I, I realized later on that that's what they call um, a passive aggressive behavior where they're gonna say they're gonna do something and, and they didn't do that. So on this day of our wedding day for family and friends, I asked him to do something and he said he would do something to prepare for it and he didn't. So, and that was another little thing to add to my stress bucket. So even though it's not a direct abusive thing, it was just, it was distressing. So the last thing I'm going to uh, mention, the last little incident, was um, after we moved into our house up in Washington, my oldest son had not joined us yet. It was um, early in July because he had stayed back to go to summer school and our house was a mess because there were boxes everywhere. There was plastic hanging everywhere because we were painting the interior and I had to pick up my son from the airport in Seattle which was about 90, a 90 minute drive that day. And my husband informs me that his whole family's coming over, his sister and all her kids and her husband and his brother and all these people are coming over. And I said, no way, this place is a disaster. I have to go to the airport and back. No, that cannot possibly happen. I can't entertain people. And he said, well, they're just coming because that's just the way they are. And he because as you guys kind of already know, it doesn't matter if you try to set a boundary with a narcissist, they ignore the boundaries and they do not care. And I don't know why he did not even help me. He didn't offer to go to the airport to pick up my son or anything. And I was so stressed out that I was late to get my son and my son was really upset because he was in a strange city he had never been to before. Well, he'd been there once, but he was there alone and he was very upset and stressed. And that was just an awful, awful day. And it was very stressful. Um, but I did not get the full, um, full on narcissistic rage abuse in for a couple more months. But those were some of the distressing kind of incidents that I just ignored and let go and didn't really know what was happening, but I was getting stressed out by my new husband and I didn't know why. So anyway, I am curious what kinds of little warning signs you might have been getting with your ex-narcissist where they were things that they weren't really abuse, but they were just signs that, you know, if your partner was really loving and caring for you and cared about your feelings or your emotions, is that how they would really be acting? So anyway, um, I'm curious to hear what kinds of experiences you had, so please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you, and thank you for stopping by.